Hey everybody, hope you're all having a nice day so far. In this video I want to show you how you can use Prezi to present a message. So here's a quick overview. Okay, so uh, Prezi for one is a presentation tool, but it's more accurately a visualization tool. It helps your audience visualize the concepts that you want to illustrate. It has a couple of unique features. For one, it has a flexible canvas. In other words, you have one giant slide where you can put all your ideas on it and then basically go from one idea to the next uh, in a very fluid manner. As you've already noticed, it has a camera that moves and this can be used pretty creatively. Um, it's kind of like the uh, kinetic typography with Adobe After Effects. If you don't know what it is, here's a quick sample. You know, I went to the McDonald's in uh, Shelbyville on Friday night. I'm like, what? A uh, McDonald's restaurant. I, I never heard of it either, but uh, they have over 2,000 locations in this state alone. Must have sprung up overnight. You know the funniest thing, though? It's the little differences. Example. Well, at McDonald's, you can buy a Krusty Burger with cheese, right? But they don't call it a Krusty Burger with cheese. Shut up. Well, why do they call it? A quarter pounder with cheese. Quarter pounder with cheese? Well, I can picture the cheese, but, uh... Do they have crusty, partially gelatinated, non-dairy, gum-based beverages? So, uh, so that's Adobe After Effects, where Prezi gives you, uh, a simpler version of it, something similar, and it's a lot more accessible. Another unique feature about Prezi is it helps you organize the information uh, with hierarchy. And the hierarchy here is scale. So you put the larger concepts on top, and then you develop the concepts uh, uh, into smaller pieces, and then you can basically zoom into that and then you know, help the audience understand it a little bit better. Finally, Prezi likes to call itself a nonlinear presentation tool, but you have to take that with a pinch of salt. In other words, it's only if you organize your Prezi very well that you can actually have a nonlinear presentation. For the moment, though, it is going from slide to slide, quote unquote. So, what's the big deal? Well, Prezi, I think, is great at creating meaning. Now, that's a bold assertion. Well, why do I say that? For one, Prezi helps people navigate the information pretty well. It helps people remember the concepts because of the visual organization. And finally, it feels really good. It has a positive affect going for it. Positive impact. There are two aspects to an influential message. The, uh, the peripheral cues, the, the appearance and things like that, and the core central arguments. Now, they're not mutually exclusive, so uh, it's not like if you have one, you can't have the other. But there is a complex relationship between uh, you know, the peripheral cues and the, the central core arguments. And uh, let's not kid ourselves. Crafting a message and having it be compelling is, uh, is quite complex. So that about captures it, but let's simplify. When crafting a message, it's uh, great if you already know a little bit about your audience. Will your audience think through your issue? If they do, then it's a lot better to go ahead and inform them rather than retain information that might be essential. Is your audience more intuitive? If they are, you need to be able to attend to the peripheral cues of your message, um, the appearance of your organization, the packaging, and so on and so forth. Because feelings do matter. And I'll talk about uh, mothers against drunk driving in a, in a bit. So you've got the um, audience now. You know, you've put them on a continuum, the analytical on one end and the uh, intuitive on the other. And uh, now when you're crafting your message, you must be wondering, should I craft it towards reason or towards feeling? Reason for the analytical types and uh, for feeling for the, for the intuitive types. But that's actually a false dichotomy because uh, your message can be compelling both ways. So they can be compelling either way and together. So in other words, you can go all reason or all emotion when 
crafting your message, and that can be compelling. Or you can have a message which has both uh, an appeal to reason as well as to um, to emotions. And there's research to back back it up. So, um, so go ahead and craft your message wisely. Another dilemma that um, you got to think about when you're presenting a message is: uh, Do you only give one side of the story, or do you acknowledge opposing views? So, uh, the research suggests that if your audience will be exposed to opposing views, then it's a lot better to go for the two-sided appeal, and that'll have your message uh, be more compelling. So um, that's something to think about as well. And here's a case study. In 2006, the Toronto Star conducted an investigative report of uh, mothers against drunk driving. And what it learned was for every dollar that went to MAD, 19 cents was spent on charitable work, and 81 cents went towards administration and fundraising. That's obviously changed now, but in 2006, this was a big deal, and this actually um, got a lot of people uh, very cynical about uh, you know the whole fundraising issue of nonprofits. And on the flip side, um, the United Way payroll donation campaign, um, very you know that took place pretty recently, uh, they basically included uh, stats and figures and you know. Um, admin costs and things like that, they basically told the person who was donating money where their money was going. In fact, they were going against their self-interest in a certain way, and this actually uh, helped offset some cynicism that could have arisen, right? So spell it out if you can, and your message can be a lot more compelling. And finally, how different should your position be when, uh, when you're crafting your message from that of your audience? Now, if you're if you're voicing a position that your audience is already familiar with and uh, they already accept then you're not going to have a problem but if you're going to try and advocate a position that's quite different or quite radical um, you might need some uh, some some assistance in a sense and the assistance is basically credibility leverage it wherever possible just consider for instance the topic of managing diversity and let's say you have a choice of you know having somebody present and you have the communications associate available and you have the executive director of a reputable nonprofit so uh i rest my case you obviously want the executive director because uh they're just more of a credible source so with credibility go ahead and establish it if you don't already have it and uh maintain it if you already have it and uh, really, the key elements are trustworthiness, um, the expertise, and of course, you want an official voice, right? In fact, if you have a Twitter account with your organization's name on it, um, when you interact with, uh, with, with the people online, it's just so much better. Like, um, um, you know, people, people actually feel a lot more closer and intimate to, uh, with your organization. So, when you do have credibility, uh, you can go ahead and advocate a position that's uh, quite different from that of your audience, and um, they'll actually be be more open and charitable to to your ideas. And finally, um, let me just touch briefly on the channel. If you have a less complex message, the research suggests that a visual medium works better. That'll have a better impact. And if you have a complex message, and this is intuitive the written medium is a lot better to have a greater impact. Uh, it's just because with the written medium, uh, it allows the audience to reflect on what you're saying. So, you know, the whole phenomenon of white papers sprouting up all over the place. Well, that's what the written medium is for. It's quite compelling, and it helps the audience uh, who's interested in the issue reflect on what's being said. But having said all of that, Prezi, I think it allows you to convey a very complex message. So go ahead and give it a shot. The nitty gritty, learning curve, few hours uh, is all you really need uh, to begin using Prezi pretty well. And uh, rehearsal and quick crash courses help, uh, just in case you're not making presentations very often. Privacy, it's great if your organization's already discussed it. Prezi is a software as a service. 
and your content is uh, hosted on Prezi servers, so it's not on your computer. And privacy, it's not just keeping secrets, right? In fact, it's uh, a little bit more than that. It's actually the inferences that uh, that businesses can make uh, based on your data that's that's on their servers. That's any Web 2.0 platform, for that matter. So that's just something that you need to think about. And the cost. Prezi, it's a freemium model. You pay for more space or the desktop version. And uh, it sounds pretty affordable. Um, but that's something to think about if you're really, you know, uh, strapped for money. And the non-profit license may be available, um, just like the educational license is available. Uh, you need to contact Prezi Sales. But it might be something along the lines of $60 a year. Now that's significant because if you don't make too many presentations, uh, let's say you just make six presentations, um, that's $10 a presentation. Remember, Prezi's software as a service, in other words, you're renting Prezi for a year at a time, right? So if you're not using it really, um, it's it's money wasted in a sense. Finally, go ahead and dress up your Prezi uh, the best way you can. If you can afford stock images, go for it. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's great public domain stuff out there, openclipart.org and uh, Creative Commons. They do have some license restrictions, so uh, uh, but the, but but it's but it's very exciting stuff at the moment. Uh, go ahead and give it a go. And plan ahead. Use an outline. This goes for any presentation, not just for using Prezi. But Prezi can be a time sink because uh, for perfectionists, you can always make it uh, a little bit better, just a little bit better, right? So you can spend a lot of time. Uh, you know, don't make you you have an outline and then people don't have to pry the Prezi out of your hands. So basically, drop an outline and you'll basically finish finish in time. And uh, use the motion when it makes sense, because uh, some people are, you know, they get the motion sickness. And don't be intimidated to give it a go at all, because uh, uh, this whole Gen Y thing and all the previous generations, it's just been blown way out of proportion. So if you're, you know, not a Gen Yer, go ahead and give it a try. It's very intuitive and uh, it's a friendly, uh, uh, you know, presentation tool to use. And if you're a Gen Yer, go ahead and you know show off your skills. And uh, let's have a look. So here's the uh, conclusion. Um, it's a great storytelling tool. It is a tool, and uh, you know that's all it is. When you're crafting your message, think about the audience. Go against your self-interest. At times, it can be uh, you can that can make for a very compelling message. And cash in on credibility wherever you can. And Prezi, it's it's a great uh, it's a great tool, um, and it looks great. It's very reliable, but for the moment, it's a bit overpriced. And just go ahead and plan ahead, dress it up, and your presentation can look great. Thanks for watching, and definitely connect with me on Twitter if you're on Twitter.